Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So, after having a brief understanding of what has been the evolutionary trends in the phylogeny of horse, now let us discuss the evolutionary changes in horses belonging to different epochs. Means, the modern horse which has acquired all these evolutionary trends, how they travelled across their journey of time. That means, the horses which were belonging to let's say Eocene epoch, or the Oligocene, Miocene, Pliocene or Pleistocene epochs, what were the characteristics in them and how they have changed with time. So we will take representative examples of each of these epochs and we will focus to understand their uh, structural changes which have been taking place throughout their journey. So starting with horses on Eocene which is the origin point of horse evolution where the first known fossil have been found in the form of Hyracotherium or um, Eohippus. We will start with those horses in Eocene and also we will discuss Orohippus in this particular epoch and we will focus what are their structures, how they used to look like, what were their skull like, what were their forelimb and hindlimb were like, what were their feeding habits and so on. So, we will discuss according to this evolutionary trends. Hyracotherium or Eohippus are the ones belonging to the Eocene horses. The word Hyracotherium comes from Hyrax like beast. Now, Hyrax is a mammal only, which is daisies kind of things. So, these small dog like animals resemble the earliest known fossil or hyracotherium. They do have an arched back. So there is an arched body shape which you can see here. They do have short neck. So the fossil suggests that these organisms used to have a very short neck. The snout was also very short. If you see this snout area, this is very small. The legs were short. It is not just like height of the modern horse. They were, the, they were having the short legs and they used to have a long tail. So this is the fossil that paleontologists have found and based on these fossils they have tried to imagine the animal that probably it would have been looking like this in the Eocene epoch. These are the oldest known fossil of horse which used to have probably the length of around 78 centimeter and a weight of around 9 kilograms. So they were none of them were close to the modern horse. They had short primitive face which you just saw with eye sockets in the middle and short diastema. As you have noticed the modern horse do have a long preorbital region and eye is far at the back, these Hyracotherium or Eohippus, they used to have eye sockets in the middle and the diastema was also not, not that long. It was a very short diastema and being the skull very small, they used to have small brain with small frontal lobes as well. If you focus on their limbs, this is their front foot or the forelimb, this is the hind foot or the hind limb. Here you can see there were four toes, whereas here in the hind limb there were only three toes. It was having a dentition which was more suitable for browsing, and that means it was not close to the hypsodont dentition but the brachydont kind of dentition which was suitable for browsing feeding habits. The species in this genus lived from around 55 or 60 million years ago to around 45 million years ago. So for almost 10 million years 
This was the species whose fossils have been found. The species found in the United States were initially given the name Eohippus, which is meaning to be the Dawn Horse by Othniel C. Marsh in 1876. So, Eohippus and Hyracothelium actually resemble almost the same organism from the phylogeny of horse. Here you can see the overall size which is around 0.4 meter. This is the limb structure and since the four toes are there, this is probably the forelimb and this is the tooth structure which resembles the brachydont kind of conditions as the crown is very small. Then moving ahead within the Eocene horses, there is another category which we call as Orohippus which is also called as the mountain horse. Now if you compare the size of this Orohippus with the Eohippus or Hyracotherium, they are slightly higher than them. And compared to Eohippus, it had slimmer body. They were not fat, uh, daisy kind of or hyrax kind of organism but a slimmer body was there with a more elongated head. If you see this head has elongated the slimmer forelimbs and longer hind limbs. So even the height has increased a bit. But they still had four toes in their forefronts or the uh, front limbs and three on the hind feet. However, the vestiges of the first and second toes vanished. So they do not have the first and second toes anymore. Again, here you can see this is the fossil and this is the image that has been redrawn based on this fossils that probably the Orohippus used to look like this. Now moving to next epoch which is Oligocene, we will discuss the two forms of for horse phylogeny which is Mesohippus and Miohippus from this epoch. The Mesohippus is also called as middle horse or intermediate horse as the meso word means the middle hippus refers to horse. It was intermediate between the eohippus which is the most primitive form of horse of the eocene epoch and the modern horse that is of holocene or pleistocene epoch. So it was an intermediate form between these two and hence their name has been given as mesohippus. Here you can see the fossil structure or skeleton of this mesohippus and accordingly the redrawn image from this fossil that probably mesohippus was like this. It was slightly larger than epihippus that is the previous one. So orohippus has smaller size, epihippus has a bit larger than that and mesohippus has again further and enhanced the size. It had three toes on its hind feet and on its front feet. Now there is a change. Earlier forms had four in four fronts and three in the hind feet. Here it had three on both hind feet as well as the front feet. They also had the brachydont dentition. So dentition has not changed yet. Again, they were still browsing kind with the brachydont dentition. Here you can see the size has increased point from 0.4 to 0.6 meter. The limb, if you focus, there are only three toes, second, third and fourth and these are the vestigial portions. If you focus on teeth, this is mainly brachydont type of dentition suitable for the browsing kind. Moving ahead within the oligocene, the next form is called as Meohippus. The word meo refers to less or small and hence they are called as lesser horse or the small horses. They are commonly referred as three-toed horse because in both forelimb as well as hind limbs they did, they did have three toes only and that is why they are calling as three-toed horse. The species of Meohippus gave rise to the first burst of diversity in the horse family. So before that, there was almost linear kind of changes, linear kind of evolution. But from new hippers, there was a burst in the biodiversity. So there were different kind of horses uh, within that. 
distinctively larger than a typical mesohippus. So, from its previous form that is mesohippus, these meohippus were having much larger size with a slightly longer skull. So, not just size in terms of limbs, but the skull has also enhanced. But they were still brachydont in terms of dentition and hence the browser. Here you can see their size has increased. You can see the limb size. You can see the skull size has also increased. And here again you can see the relating image of based on the fossils. Now moving ahead to the next epoch which is Miocene. And under Miocene we will discuss two main types of horse which are Parahippus and Merichippus. The Parahippus were still a bit larger than this, its previous form Miohippus with about the same size of brain and the same body form. So the size has slightly increased but the brain size and overall structure of body or the body form is almost the same as in the previous form of Miohippus. Now this Parahippus it appears to be a link between the old forest dwelling horses and the modern plain dwelling grazers. So as you have noticed that there has been an evolutionary trend from the browsers to grazers this particular form Parahippus appears to be a intermediate or the link between these two forms. It had three toes like primitive horses but the side toes were very small. So just like previous forms they also have three toes in both their forelimbs and hind limbs but their side toes has become much smaller. And if you see their structures they are horse faced means their overall head has changed which looks more like a horse now. It's not like hyrex kind of organism or it's not like dog kind of thing now. Now it is appearing more like a horse or long headed with the eye socket fell back from the middle of the scale. So again the pre-orbital region has increased now. In contrast to the previous forms the skull has changed. The pre-orbital region has been pushed back from the middle. So it is no more in the middle of the skull. And also the shape of the head has changed in the way that now it looks more like a horse. Now, this is the fossil of Parahippus which you can see here and based on this, this is the image which you can see that it looks more like a horse with a horse like a head with a much larger body and body similar to modern horses and that is why we are calling it as a intermediate or the link kind of thing between the earlier forms and the recent forms. The next form is called as Merichippus. Merichippus is also called as ruminant horse. The Merichippus means as the ruminant horse. Now the one important thing is this is the first three-toed grazers. So now they are not more the browsers but they are more of a grazers and how they attain this grazers mode because there has been a change from brachydont to hypsodont dentition and because the crown size has increased they have changed their mode of feeding from browsers to grazers now and still they are three-toed so that is why we are calling them as first three-toed grazers they are more elongated pre-orbital regions. So uh, if you focus on this, the, this region has increased much more than the previous forms. And the well-developed diastema. In the earlier forms, there was not much uh, evidence of diastema elongation and so on. But in this form, you can see a well-developed diastema is there. And they were spring-footed. That means the spring mechanism is increasing. Here in this fossil, you can see they have the single toed and the lateral toes are not even touching the ground. So they are attaining this unguli grained kind of thing slowly and slowly. But one thing is very prominently uh, to be no noticed that they are having epsodon dentition and the grazers mode unlike the previous forms. Here is the marichippus. You can see 
focus on the height earlier we saw 0.4 meter and 0.6 meter now it is almost 1 meter long or height uh, uh, horse again it is still three toed but this is the hypsodont kind of dentition you can see the crown has increased a lot so they have adopted the browsing mode here Moving ahead, the next epoch is Pliocene epoch and within Pliocene, we do have examples to be considered like Hipparion, Pleohippus and Dinohippus. All these used to belong to the epoch Pliocene. Let's discuss them one by one. Hipparion, the word Hipparion comes from a Greek word which means pony. Now pony is almost 40 inches in height the last three toed ancestor of horse see up to hipparion all of them are three toed now from hipparion onwards you will start seeing the single toed horses so this is important because this hipparion represents the last three toed ancestor of horse so besides increasing in size besides increasing in um, other evolutionary trends now there is a last three-toed ancestor of horse left. Here is the museum specimen of the skeleton of Hipparion and accordingly the image is redrawn here based on the fossils. Next is called as Pleohippus within the Pleocene horses. Now this Pleohippus, Pleo means more and Hippus means horse. So Pleohippus is more like horses. So in terms of looks if you see they appear more like horses now, unlike the previous forms. It is just like modern horse and it is around 1.25 meters long. See, starting with Eohippus or Hyracotherium, which was only 0.4 meter, then we move to 0.6 meter, 1 meter, and now we have attained a size of horse as 1.25 meters, which is increasing, overall increase in size. And it is grazers so now no more browser forms are there it is grazer form and as i just mentioned in the previous slide hipparion was the last three-toed horse and thus pleohippus is the first one-toed horse so pleohippus is the one which started the one-toed kind of evolutionary trend so besides shifting from browsers to grazers Besides increasing the pre-orbital region, besides uh, increasing overall size, now they have changed to one-toed kind of conditions, which is more of angulicrate. Pleohippus was very similar to the modern horse or equus, except two points, which are the Pleohippus skull had deep facial fossae. Now these fossae which were present in the skull of Pleohippus in the modern horse or equus, you do not see these facial, facial, uh, sorry, facial fossae. So this is one difference which is there in case of Pleohippus and the modern horse. The second difference is Pleohippus teeth were strongly curved. So this curvature of teeth which was present in Pleohippus it is not there in the modern horse. The teeth of modern horse are quite straight. But besides these two differences, the pleohippus almost resemble like our modern horse or equus. Here you can see the size has reached to around 1.25 meter. Now you can see it is the single toad. Even the second and fourth toad has become almost vestigial. So this is present in the lateral position but it is walking only on the third toe and again the dentition has changed to hypsodont only with the large crowns which is suitable for its grazing mode of nutrition. The next form is called as Dinohippus which also belong to Pliocene horses. The Dinohippus means a terrible horse. You must remember the previous form was one toed. So even this had this one toed kind of structure. This used to look smashingly just like equus in all the terms like foot morphology, the tooth, the skull and so on. It 
was just like a horse and it is the most common horse in North America in the late Pliocene. So if you see the horse forms belonging to the Pliocene uh, epoch, this is the most common form which is found, right? So what are the features which you can see for the Dinohippus? They are single toed, one toed, so that means anguli grade loco uh, locomotion is there. They are grazers in nature, so that means they do have hypsodont the conditions. They do have long pre-orbital region. The body form is most like a modern horse. And again, you can compare it with this skeleton which is there for the horse or dinohippus. And this is the image which has been redrawn based on this skeleton. Now, lastly, let us come to the modern form which evolved in the Pliocene epoch which is called as Equus. In the Pleistocene horses, the Equus arrived which is the genus of all modern equines. It is a one-toed ungulicrate. It is hypsodont in nature. It is a grazer. It is a spring-footed organism. It is a large brain-sized organism. So you can see the modern horse has all the characteristics which we just discussed in the initial part of our lecture. So Equus, which was there in Pleistocene, it had reached to the condition where all these characteristics were seen. Here is the overall chart which we just discussed throughout the lecture. We have seen overall increase in size from here to here, which is around from 0.4 meter to 1.6 or 1.7 meters. We have seen the change in terms of limbs. We have seen the change in terms of teeth. In case of limb, it was palentigrade or digitigrade to ungulicrate mode. In case of teeth, it was from bacidon to hypsodon. Also, which is not shown here, in case of skull, the increase in the overall size of skull and the preorbital region is very evident. Now, as I just mentioned in the initial part, the Equus caballus is not the only horse which we see. If you see from here, that is clockwise, if you go from top left like this, you can see there are different forms. This is Equus kiang, Equus ferus preserski, Equus brevi, Equus caballus, homunus, Equus quagua, Equus african sacinus, and Equus zebra. So all these belong to the horses but they are different species of the genus Equus which we are not discussing species level of evolution or changes but it shows how diversified the evolution has been, how the branching has been there in case of evolution of horse. Now let's discuss what has been the environmental correlation with the horse evolution. Though we have seen the evolutionary trends, evolutionary changes, but was environment playing a role for that? What was the role or correlation with respect to environment that led to these kind of changes in the horse of evolution? The survival of the varieties with greater speed and body size to escape predators. That has been probably a reason that it changed from, uh, it became the one which used to run faster. So accordingly, the changes were acquired. During the Cenozoic era, cooling climate replaced the forest with the grasslands. Simple hooves and elongated legs were adaptive for running in open and elongated muzzle to reach the grass muzzle is the front part, the snout part. So this is also an important feature of environment that needs to be considered when we are talking about evolution of horse. Also, the grasses are rich in silica and for this kind of vegetation to feed upon, the high crown teeth are quite adaptive. So these are the environmental conditions which were there which we can discuss while studying the evolution of horse. How it actually happened, we can just give an idea based on the evidences. Now, the fossil equidae or the fossils which were there of equus uh, family not only present an evidence of evolution, it is not merely the physical evidence of evolution, but it also shows 
various characteristics of evolution. So it helps us to understand evolution in general. Like evolution does not occur in a linear straight path towards a goal. Rather, it is like a branching bush with no predetermined course. So this is an important thing when we talk about evolution. And taking an example of evolution of horse, we can understand this line. Because the horse evolution also did not move the head in a single line from one form to another, to another, to another and so on. It moved in branches, a bushy branches and it shows that it was not a predetermined goal that it has to reach to that particular level but it was without any predetermined goal and it moved according to the uh, in different directions according to the evolutionary prevalence. The direction of evolution depends on the ecological challenges and the variations. Ecological challenges which were faced by the organisms of that species and the variations that were existing in that particular species. And it is not an inherent evolutionary trend. So it is not an evolutionary trend which is by uh, birth or inherent that it has to go in this particular directions for evolution. But it has been decided by ecological challenges and the variations. Several different evolutionary mechanisms may operate for origin of new species. So it is not just unidirectional or one mechanism which can lead to the origin of new species. There can be number of evolutionary mechanisms which may operate in order to bring out the new species. So these are the points of evolutions, evolution uh, which we generally consider while talking or discussing evolution and horse evolution can be taken as an example to make understand about these kind of changes. Alright, so let's quickly summarize what we did in this last one hour lecture. We started with the horse evolution and for that we started discussing what horse is, what are the, what is the classification of horse, what are the prominent characteristics and particularly we talked about the characteristics which we can use to identify the fossil of horse. So these were the characteristics mainly with respect to skull and the skull features with respect to forelimb and hindlimb bones with respect to teeth and so on. So once we had this idea we then moved ahead to discuss why do we study horse evolution. So it is not only the evolution uh, evidence that we take an horse uh, phylogeny as an example of but we do study horse of uh, evolution of horse to understand various phenomena of evolution and we also discussed why particularly horse and not other animals for that. Then we talked about the major evolutionary trends in the horse phylogeny which has what has been the changes in the evolution of horse. After that we discussed elaborately all these evolutionary trends in the horses which were belonging to different epochs. So we took representative examples of the horses which used to belong to different epochs and we try to understand their structural changes or the evolutionary changes. And lastly, we discussed about the environmental correlation probably which helped or which played a role in the evolution of horse and we discussed about the characteristics of evolution from the horse phylogeny. So, with this, I would like you to suggest to go through these two websites for better understanding of horse evolution which have given quite elaborate uh, uh, features of horse evolution. Besides this, you can read the books by Ridley, by Hall and Hall Grimson and Douglas J. Fotoyama for understanding the horse phylogeny. Thank you so much and happy learning.